So usually this comic is true. Usually we have Linux support for something six months after it's been on the market, if not longer. Today, I'm quite happy to announce that you can finally buy USB 3 devices, and we've had Linux support for them for six months. So at uh, CES, um, the USB uh, Imp Implementers Forum, which is the official uh, USB consortium, announced that it had 17 devices that were finally certified. When they go through certification, it's kind of a rigorous electrical testing, software testing to make sure it works. So there's finally motherboards with built-in USB 3 on them from uh, NEC. There is also um, PCI Express cards you can buy for your laptop to plug in and get a USB 3 host. And if you're looking in the market for a new laptop, HP has actually come out with a, a nice uh, laptop called the HP NV15. And I've heard that they will actually have USB 3 inside of it. Um, and there's PCI cards you can buy. Uh, most of the USB 3 devices that I've seen out there are um, USB 3 mass storage drives. So, and the most of the ones I've seen are like one to two terabyte drives, so really fast and really large storage. So hi, I am Sarah Sharp, and I am here to talk about Linux USB 3 support. So a uh, brief agenda. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about USB 1.1 and 2.0 devices. Uh, so the, the low speed, full speed, high speed devices that you're used to. Um, when I refer to USB 2.0 devices, I'm referring to all those, those different speeds. So try not to be too confused. So I'll talk a little bit about USB 2 devices and why they suck, why USB 3 devices are pretty darn cool, um, and talk a little bit about uh, Linux USB 3 support that we have today. And what there is still left to do. Oh yeah, and uh, there'll be a demo in there if the hardware works. So why isn't USB 2 good enough? Has anyone ever tried to back up their hard drive to an external USB drive? How many hours did it take? It's slow. USB 2 is slow. It's also not very power efficient. So um, one of the problems with USB 2 is that devices are pulled. So the host asks the device, hey, do you have data for me? The device says no. And it's this constant back and forth of, do you have data? No. Do you have data? No. Um, so there's constant polling going on. Even when there's not, you're not communicating with a device, there's these little heartbeats that go out over the USB bus called startup frames. And they're sent every one millisecond. So even when you're not communicating with your devices at all, this heartbeat's going out and it's wasting power. One of the um, other issues is that, you know, they did try to do um, some power management with USB 2 devices. There's a state called uh, device suspend. So all of these USB 2 devices are supposed to be able to go into this low power state. The problem is, is that certain popular OSs didn't actually implement device suspend for many devices. And so it didn't get tested. And when we started to enable it in Linux, we actually found that some devices break when you tell them to go into this lower power state. For example, um, a USB mass storage device would actually um, turn off power to the drive before spinning down the drive which caused a horrific noise and lovely loss of data. Um, so we ended up doing some, uh, uh, making it the user spaces policy for whether it would enable um, this device suspend. But that's kind of a kludge because then we're just pushing off policy into user space in the distros. So generally USB 2 kind of sucks for it's slow and it doesn't have very good power management. Are there any questions so far? Please stop me if you have questions. So why is USB 3 interesting? 
Has anyone read anything about it? Well, Matthew, you don't count. <laughs> yes, okay, so yes, first of all, it's much faster than USB 2. So it's ten times, the wire speed itself is 10 times faster than USB 2. So you should be getting, uh, seeing your external hard drives be 10 times faster. There's still some performance issues, but I would rather get the code correct and work on performance issues later. USB 3 is also very interesting because they ended up putting a lot of thought into the power management for it. So I talked a little bit about USB 2 devices and how they're pulled all the time. With USB 3 devices, they've actually added asynchronous device notifications. So when you ask a device for data, instead of having to pull it for data all the time, the device says, hey, I don't have data yet, but I'll let you know when I do. So it sends out this asynchronous notification when it actually has data. And so it reduces the polling that's going on on the bus. They also got rid of the start of frame. So when um, there is no communication going on the bus, the bus should be silent. There should be no start of frames, no heartbeats going out. They also added these two interesting uh, new power management features called function power management and link power management. And I'll get into those into detail later. Um, the USB 3 host controller, which is called XHCI, is also interesting because it natively supports scatter gather lists. With older USB host controllers, you had to send down just a buffer. But with XHCI, you can send down the entire scatter gather list. And so for mass storage devices, this really improves the performance because the host can take the scatter gather list and burst out the data onto the bus in a more efficient manner than if it had been given each entry one at a time. Um, USB 3 is also interesting because they added native support to the USB bus for SCSI command queuing and for asynchronous completion of SCSI commands. And so this will actually allow uh, USB uh, disk drives and SSDs to be faster than if uh, you had a standard uh, bulk only transport device attached. And I'll get into detail more later about that. USB 3 is also <laughs> very useful because it's backwards compatible with USB 2. So all of your USB 2 devices should work under a USB 3 host. They will not work any faster under a USB 3 host, though. It's an important thing to note. You can take a USB 3 device, these, these USB mass storage devices, and put it into the normal ports on your USB laptop into a 2.0 host. But then it's going to talk at 2.0 speeds. So to really get the speed of these new devices, you have to have a USB 3.0 device and a USB 3.0 host, an XHCI host. So I've put some slides up there of the cables. There are two. Um, there, the one on the left up there is something that you would see on the side of your laptop or your desktop. That's the, the host side port. You would plug in. And that connector right there actually looks very much like um, anything you'd see on the end of a normal USB device. But there's more pins further in the back because they actually took the USB 3.0 they actually took the USB 2 wires and they added two pairs of, um, of wires for USB 3 devices. So you actually, instead of having, um, having only the host or the device to be able to talk at, this, at, um, at one time, you can actually, since you have two pairs of wires, you can have the host and the device talking at the same time. So USB 2 devices will talk over these USB 2.0 wires that are still there, USB 3.0 devices will talk over these two new uh, pairs of wires. And there are two on the device side. There are two different connectors. One of the complaints about USB 2 was that there were like six to eight different connectors on the device side. So for USB 3, they standardized on two. They were really going to standardize on one, which is the one on you're right there. Um, but the printer manufacturers 
didn't like how dinky the connector looked. And so now we have two connectors. I'm sorry. So what do we have now? Um, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we have most devices, most of your USB, old USB devices will work under a USB 3 host. The only devices that won't work currently are um, any device that has an isochronous endpoint on it. So that's mostly your webcam. Um, I just haven't written the code yet. It will go in. Um, but I've kind of been you know, busy with LCA and haven't been able to write that code. Um, but most of your other devices should work. Uh, your US, new USB 3 mass storage devices should work too. Um, so this is the current state in bleeding edge Linux kernel. There are actually Linux distros that are shipping USB 3 code right now. So you can go out and buy a device and have your updated distro and have that device just work. Most distros are shipping 2631. There were some features that didn't make it into 2631. So in particular, uh, USB 2 devices under hubs will not work in 2631. But most everything else works except for web cameras and the hubs. Are there any questions? Matthew. So USB 3.0 hubs won't work under, um, there, no, no, first of all, no one's come out with the USB 3.0 hub yet. They're, well, they might be out, but they're not certified, certainly. Um, so, if, so if you have a USB 3.0 hub and you don't have the updated software and you're running it, on, well, the problem is, is that you need the latest Linux kernel to even get the USB host controller to work. So um, you can take a USB 3.0 hub and plug it into an EHCI port, but that would be the only way you'd be able to get it to work if you did not have the XHCI, the USB 3.0 host controller driver. Yes, the XHCI host controller will not work without the XHCI driver. Okay, any other questions? Uh, question, yes? um, what about the um, really tiny USB sockets so like uh, you'd find on a phone that most people here would normally have? Uh, do, have they made any changes for that smaller socket in terms of... Oh, um, you mean... Mobile so phone if devices? You, if you look at that one right there, that's actually a um, micro USB, the, the, the one on your right. Second, right, yeah. The, so the, that one is actually a, a micro AB connector, and that's what you would find on your little cell phones. So what they did is they put more wires off to the side for the USB 3. So you still will be able to take like a micro USB cable that you have now and plug it into your cell phone that supports USB 3, but then it's just going to talk at, at USB 2 speed. You have to have the wires and hardware on both ends. Any more questions? Okay. Who wants a demo? Awesome. Let's see if we can get this to work. Okay. So I have attached to this computer, I have the, see the, the line with the IO interconnect? That's, that's the USB 3 device that's attached to my computer right now. Um, that's a certified uh, USB 3.0 device that I actually bought off of Amazon, I think it is. Uh, and we can tell that it's a USB 3 device by taking the LS USB and telling it, give, it, give me verbose output and only give it for that device. And if we go back up, we can see, oops, one more. See the, the BCD USB line up there? See how it says 3.0? So that's how you know that it's a 3.0 device that's actually attached to your computer. 
So, you can't see my other screen, but I am opening um, the USB 3 drive uh, in uh, a GUI. Ah, good. So you can see that this is my lovely USB 3 drive. I've got it labeled there. Um, this is going to be very interesting. So we're going to have a little race between the USB 3 drive and the uh, flash drive that you got as part of LCA. This is a USB 2 device. Here's, let me see if I can get this all on one screen. This is going to bear with me for a second. So I have my lovely uh, movie file that I downloaded. Um, it's an open source movie. And it's 815 megabytes. So we're going to have a little race between this USB 2 drive and this USB 3 drive and see who's faster. I don't know if the, uh, the, the numbers are actually correct, because this is Ubuntu. I don't know what they do. But the point is, is that you can copy the, the, uh, the movie to your USB 3 drive. <laughs> and actually start playing your movie before the USB 2 drive even finishes. Is your USB 2 drive done yet? Uh, no, let's move on. So any questions about that demo? Yes. Uh, You're probably a reasonable person to, person to ask about what's going on with the buffering in USB 2 there, because it does seem to be doing this. I need to you know, take a chunk, chunk of time to get, grab some more stuff off the disk, which I can't do synchron uh, you know, asynchronously with copying it to the USB 2 device. And that sort of stuff. Is that what's happening, or is it just well, an illusion? Well, what, what I think was, was happening is that, um, well, I'm not sure. Maybe Matthew can answer about disk caching and all of that. But you might want to ask him afterwards. Do you, do you know? Because it, lo it looked like. And, and it, I have seen it work that if you try to transfer the files to like the USB 2 drive and the USB 3 drive at the same time, I don't know if I'm getting bandwidth limited by my hard disk versus. Yeah, I was, I was thinking it might be something like that, that USB 3 and USB 2 are interacting with each other because you've got the yeah. same controller involved with both of those, I think. Uh, the other thing is the, the, are, are they separate? Two, they're completely separate. I did not plug in my USB 2 drive, drive into my USB 3 host controller. This is using EHCI and XHCI. Well, can't be that then. So the, the other thing it might possibly be is that uh, you, you, you're doing buffering. So you're writing to cache, and then it's trying to flush the cache out to disk. And so what we, we're, we're seeing it move here, but that's not necessarily reflective of bytes going to the drive. It might be bytes going to the page cache, and then we ah. wait a little bit while the page cache flushes out to disk. Right. But I have but done. But I don't really yeah. know. But I have done um, performance analysis of turning off the disk cache, turning off the, the page cache, 
And um, the USB 3 drive is much, much faster than the USB 2 drive, even with those turned off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's let's just let that finish and continue on with the talk. So, to do list. That was really cool. What can we do to make it even cooler? Um, and you know, there's just me working on USB three right now. If you guys could help too, that would be wonderful. Pretty pretty smile. No, this was some to do list that I grabbed off of Flickr. Yeah, no, I, I would never shave my cat. That's just cruel. <laughs> so to-do list. Um, we can actually make that demo even faster. Um, so I talked a little bit about uh, bulk streams and how to do SCSI command queuing. This is the next big thing for USB 3 mass storage. Um, so the idea is that you take a SCSI command, a group of SCSI commands, and they've all got IDs attached to them. And so you turn that into what's called a stream ID on the USB 3 bus. And you kind of overload this bulk endpoint so the device can choose which stream ID, which tagged SCSI command it wants to start. So if it's a spinning media, it can look at where the disk head is now, look at the SCSI commands that have already been queued to the device and say, I want to work on that command and that command because this is physically close to where my sector head is now. If you've got flash-based media or SSDs, then those can actually start prefetching the blocks into their buffer cache once it knows which blocks you want for the SCSI command. So this is really interesting. Um, there's a lot of work that's going to need to be done to actually support this. First of all, you have to have drives that actually support these streams IDs. Um, the, the USBIF is working on a new mass storage device class specification. Um, so we're going to have to wait for, for drives to appear that actually support that, that specification. It's not finalized yet. And we're probably going to need a new uh, device driver to support this class specification, this new device. Uh, the new device class specification is called the USB attached SCSI protocol. Um, we might be able to get away with modifying the current USB mass storage driver, but this is really a new, new breed of device. And so it would be nice to get rid of some of the um, legacy error handling for all um, your wacky USB 2 devices that don't quite handle the SCSI layer commands properly. Um, so we need a new device driver. We probably also need new API in the USB core to allow this device driver to allocate the stream IDs. Um, and that's because the XHCI, the USB 3 host controller driver, has to do a lot of setup in the hardware to allocate structures in memory for these stream IDs. Basically, every, um, every stream ID has a, a transfer ring associated with it. So it's probably bad if the driver allocates 35K of them, which it can, um, and, and allocates a bunch of memory for that. So there's going to have to be a lot of work done in a new device driver, in a new API for the Linux USB core, and work in the XHCI driver. I do have code in the XHCI driver in a separate branch to support streams. Unfortunately, because I don't have the UASP driver, I can't test my code. So if uh, anyone knows of any company working on such a Linux UASP driver, uh, yeah, you should post your code, please. Um, so that's enough about that. I would like to talk a little about the current USB power management state and why it sucks a little bit. So the idea, as I said, with uh, USB 2.0 devices is that you have this device suspend state. And the OS has to keep track of the device's idleness, what the driver's doing. And after about two seconds of idleness, it tells the device to suspend. To suspend. It's kind of like you as a parent telling your kid to go to sleep. 
which, but you know, USB devices are actually supposed to listen to you instead of your kids. Unfortunately, some of them don't. Some of them break. But the, the main idea is that the OS has to tell the device to go to sleep. And if certain OSs don't test, then this doesn't get tested in USB devices. So USB 3 decided that um, device suspend needed to be finer grained. So they added function suspend, which is basically the idea that you can suspend parts of the USB device rather than just suspending the whole device. So if you have a multifunction printer, you can um, put the scanner and the card reader to sleep while you're doing printing from it, which is a great idea, except that it's optional for USB 3 devices. Most USB 3 devices are not multifunction. Your USB mass storage drive is just a mass storage drive. It's only got one function. So it's not really going to help with power management, I think. But we should still support it in Linux for those devices that do have function power management. So the, the main problem here, though, is that the OS still has to tell the device when to suspend the functions. It's only up to the OS to tell the device when to go to sleep. So you still have to tell the device to go to sleep. What if, instead, the device went to sleep when no one was talking to it? What if it went to sleep on its own? And that's the idea behind USB 3 link power management. Um, so the idea is that the devices know when something is communicating with it. Often a device has a contract with the OS that says, I'm going to send you data every two milliseconds, for instance. The device knows once it's done sending its data for that period that it can go into a lower power state. And so there are uh, three link states that a device and its link partner can be in. There's the active state, U0. There's U1, which is um, a lower power link state, but you can exit out of it fast. There's U2, which is a deeper power saving state, but you can come, uh, but it takes longer to come out of it. So um, the idea is that the highest power link state is propagated up the tree. So if all the devices in the tree are in, if one of the devices in the tree is in U0, which that um, mass storage drive is, then the, the topmost layer is going to be at U0. Um, the interesting thing with link power management is that the OS is not involved in the day-to-day -day activities of link power management. It's up to the device to decide whether it wants to go into a lower power state. Now, because we have this history of devices not implementing power management correctly, um, in the USB 3 bus specification, they said, OK, the, the USB 3 hubs have a backup, um, a backup policy. So if the devices don't go into a lower power state, there's a timer. And after so many um, microseconds of idleness, the hub above the device will actually tell it to go into a lower power link state. So devices are supposed to set the policy, but the hubs have a backup policy. The only way that the OS gets involved in this is that the OS has to set the, the timeouts in each hub for when they should go into a lower power link state. But the uh, the day-to-day the -day activity of actually going into the lower power link states are left up to the hub and the devices on the bus. Yes, question? I'll, I'll repeat it. Good question, good question. So um, he said that uh, what I mentioned with USB 2 devices is that since the OS has to tell the device to go to sleep, it wasn't tested very well. So with link power management, his question is, is link power management being tested? The answer is yes. Since um, it is not dependent upon the OS 
to actually tell the devices to go to sleep, and the, the device drivers have to be involved too. Um, this is actually just setting a timeout. Um, they are testing it in certification. So all of the USB 3.0 devices that have this logo on the, the packaging should do link power management. If they don't, there's probably something wrong. They probably copied their packaging from someone else. Question. Oh, wait, wait, wait for the mic. Some USB sticks have... Uh like indicator that shows that they are operating like a red, some lead on the USB stick. And I f uh, find it interesting that if you use it in Windows, uh, like uh, auto -remo remove device, uh, that, that link goes down. So it's just like in Linux, you can uh, say uh, whatever, just whatever you say, you, you can unmount, you can say eject device. It doesn't do that. Okay, so, so the deal with so, so what he's saying is that when you have, un, under Windows, when you say safely remove device, then the LED actually turns off on the device. Under Linux, if you, you know, unmount your drive, then the LED stays on. Yep. That's because of the way the drivers are written in Windows. When you say safely, when, when you plug in a device, a new instance of the device driver is loaded. So when you say safely remove that device, the, the port driver for that device is actually unloaded, and that cuts off the power to the port. So sometimes, the, so on some machines, it may actually power off the LED. Some machines don't actually have port power on them, and it might stay on. But the, the main difference is, is between the driver model between Windows and Linux. Linux wants to keep the USB mass storage around when you unmount it, because you might do something like CF disk or DD or something oh, like no. that. But the point is that I can't mount it again if I ejected it. You can't what? I cannot mount it again. If oh, I can't. say eject uh -huh. the SDA, I cannot mount it again. Under ever. Windows? Uh, on Linux. I don't use Windows. Just like I noticed that. Well, you should send a bug report to the Linux USB mailing list <laughs> okay. if and you can't mount it again. OK, can I have another question? Why USB? Why not FireWire, which has been for a longer time? which is less CPU intensive, which is faster. But well, I'm, I'm not going to get into the politics of USB versus just, FireWire. Just politics. The answer is politics. Um, well, uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into that, because I don't know very much about FireWire. Okay. I was just hired to work on USB 3. So that, that's what I do. Sorry, okay. I don't know anything about FireWire. <laughs> there was another question over here somewhere. It was sort of about certification. Um, I, I guess the certification of, say, a, a hub, most current cheap crap USB 2 hubs uh, don't implement the, the, the turning off port power. Um, it, it's not about cheap. It's optional to turn off port yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. But with the USB 3 certification, um, I don't guess there's a, a wording that says must, is there? It's just a should? No, 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 because port... Okay, so the, the deal with the port power is that it costs them a lot of money to put in the extra circuitry to turn off each port individually. So it was an option whether they would have ganged port power switching where you can turn off all the ports at once or individual port power where you can turn them off one at a time. And most just choose the, the ganged port switching because it's cheaper. I mean, it's, it's, not a, 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 it's, it's not against the specification to do so. Any other questions? Has there been any change to the port power available? Um, so yes, they increased the port power. And actually, um, with, with the, the PCI Express cards that you get, the PCI Express specification does not allow enough current draw. And so what they've done with the, the PCI Express cards is if you want to plug in a self-powered USB 3.0 device, that requires more power, you have this little dongle that runs from the express card to a USB 2 port, and it's just, it's ugly. Just buy a PCI add-in card if you can. You'll get faster speeds, too, if you buy the PCI add-in card rather than the express card, just because of the, the limited bandwidth of the PCI express bus. Yes? And can we build a network over USB? Can we what? Build a network. Well, FireWire can. Oh. Network. No, more FireWire Okay, questions. no, no, the question is about network. Can we build a network using <laughs> USB? No. no. 
Oh, we cannot. Okay. <laughs> Diff different different models. USB is just not built with the multiple master mode in mind. It's built with a master slave mode in mind. Have they changed USB on the go? Um, I believe they had talked about updating it, but you know, basically they can take the USB on the go spec and just apply it to USB 3. I think that they, uh, I remember I was in a spec meeting and there was a guy who presented about USB 3 but I, on the go, but I haven't heard too much about it. I suspect they probably will because cell phones are still going to have to act as either host or slave. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, so I, I talked about link power management. You all seem to be bored with link power management. Um, but I have one more thing to say about that, which is that um, the OS has to be careful when enabling link power management because the devices can actually go to sleep when you don't want them to. Since there's, since there's this exit latency associated with all the devices, including the root hub port, um, for example, in this, in, in this example, um, the exit latency of the entire path to that device is one millisecond. If you're going to pull that device every millisecond, you don't want it to go into that lower power link state. That just doesn't make sense. So there's going to have to be some OS smarts there about whether you enable this low power link state or not. Um, there's also a couple other miscellaneous things to do with USB 3.0. Uh, need to support USB 3.0 hubs, as Matthew pointed out. We, we, don't, we need to update the K-hub driver, K-hub D, uh, for USB 3.0 hubs, which probably involves some descriptor changes and a little bit of behavioral change, especially around the uh, power management features that went in. Um, we also need to test, so since the XHCI, the USB 3.0 host, can handle all device speeds, and I don't have all devices, I need your guys' help to test all your wacky USB devices under XHCI host. And, or you can send me them. I like presents. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I need your help with testing that. And, and if things break, then um, there are some uh, configuration options for debugging. And I put those in the notes in the slides for what configurations to turn on to add more debugging. And then you can send. Uh, well, send me, but CC the, the Linux USB mailing list, um, the, the D message from that. Um, are there any device, USB uh, device driver writers in the audience? No, no, okay, I won't talk about non-standard polling rates, but if there's someone on the, watching the video, uh, talk to me if your driver uses a polling rate that is different from the rate that's advertised in the endpoint descriptor. So how do you get USB 3.0? Well, you know, you can buy devices now. Now I don't have to try to send people prototypes. Um, so as I said, you can buy motherboards, PCI express cards, PCI add-in cards, laptops, and uh, lots of USB 3.0 mass storage devices. Make sure that you buy the ones with the logo on them, because that means that it's actually been certified and you won't buy crap. So in summary, USB 3.0 support is mostly there. There's a couple things that still needs to be done for basic support to support webcams, like isochronous uh, endpoint transfers. Um, sending bugs reports if they don't work anyway. Um, and there's still a lot more cool stuff to do with link power management, function power management, USB 3.0 hubs, and uh, the, the interesting USP uh, mass storage uh, command queuing support. So if you have any questions, you can ask me after this presentation, or you can ask me on the, the Linux USB mailing list. So are there any questions right now, though? One more question? I can't comment on Windows support for USB 3.0 power management. Yes. Wait, wait, wait for the mic. Is it uh, your impression that the, it's going to be very wide release in the next in this year, like tons and tons of devices and tons and tons of motherboards and that supporting, or going to take a little longer? 
So the, the question was, do I think that there's going to be like a ton of USB 3.0 devices and, and hosts and motherboards coming out? Um, I think that the, you know, what I've been seeing is that mostly people are implementing mass storage devices. And they're, they're, being, you know, they're, they're interested in doing that first. Eventually, I think there's going to be like USB 3.0 cameras and things. I don't think there'll ever be a USB 3.0 mouse, just because that, that wouldn't make sense. Um, but you know, I, I do see that it's going to be start to be added to people's motherboards, people's laptops. I don't think, and I, I can't comment about you know the the market how fast it's going to be. I just don't have that that idea. Back, back to your earlier point about uh, we need a, a new driver for, for UASP. Um, on the Linux SCSI mailing list, we've had three or four people from the usual kinds of um, how should I put, consulting companies asking, how do I write a, a, a SCSI driver because I have to write this UAS driver? Yeah, um, there's, there's about five people with hiding behind Gmail addresses that I've seen separately on the USB mailing list talking, asking the same sorts of questions so I know they all get stuck at the same spot, which is not what open source software is for. We should all be collaborating on this. It's almost like writing a driver's hard or something. <laughs> Um, do, do, do you have any recommendations for what you would like us, as, as, as SCSI people, to say to these people? Would you like us to just send them over to you, or, or, or should we tell them to get knotted in our own in, inimitable way? Tell them to post their code. If they ask questions, tell them that they should post their code, because you can't understand what they're talking about until they post their code. And then maybe enough people will post enough of their examples that will piece together a driver. But you know, definitely, if you get a question on the SCSI mailing list about you know, this UASP driver, you should say, there are five different companies working on this. You know, and you're probably not going to be the first to get it done. You will get it done faster if you post your code, and we can all help you out. <laughs> yes? Um, I'm sort of assuming that I think you've covered that the reason that there's not going to be a USB 3.0 mouse is because of, firstly, the hardware is more expensive to US, USB natively. Secondly, the mouse has low bandwidth support yep. requirements. And thirdly, therefore, um, you can take a USB 2.0 mouse or even a USB 1.0 mouse well, well, okay, so, and so plug it into a USB yeah. port. And yeah. it, so that the support for the USB um, host adapter does that support right back to USB 1? Yes. So, oh, cool. so, so the question was, you know, basically why does no one want to make a USB 3 mouse? It's, it's expensive. The hardware itself is expensive. And also, we just don't need the speed with the mouse. People don't move mice that fast. Um, most mice are actually a low speed device, the slowest USB device that you can be. I've seen one joystick that's a full speed device, and that was like an intense extreme gamer joystick. Um, but most USB devices, uh, the, the mice are still low speed, and low speed devices will work under the, the USB 3.0 XHCI host. The XHCI host will cover all speeds, and in fact, um, it covers all speeds without a companion controller like EHCI does. It's just the XHCI driver, it's just the XHCI hardware handles everything, so there's less complexity. Yes? So, so the question was, does, does the, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to repeat questions. I, I don't want to, I don't want to. So the, the question was, if you plug in like a USB mouse and you've got a USB 3.0 hub and it's got a USB 3.0 device attached, does it slow down the whole bus? The answer is no. The, the USB 2.0 bus, what it used to do was that it would translate the traffic, the high speed traffic that it received on its port, down to the low speed traffic. And so the, what happens now with USB 3.0 is that your USB 3.0 device is actually using those extra USB 3.0 wires. It's not talking over those USB 2.0 wires. So then the USB 2.0 wires, the hub then translates the speed down. So within a USB 3.0 hub, there's actually a USB 3.0 hub component that's completely separate from the USB 2.0 hub component, which means that the USB hub vendors can reuse their old silicon that's on the USB 2.0 side and just tack on some new USB 3.0 support. I think if anybody's got any further questions, we can probably do that out in the foyer. Um, thank you very much, Sarah.
We've got uh, the usual gift. Thank you.